That said, the effect on the head and, you know, if you think about like hot tubs, jacuzzis, right, we're all sitting with our head out as well, right? Mm -hmm. We're in there and uh, it's, 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 it's a good question because I agree with you when I'm in a hot sauna and I'm also on the top and it's like the same deal. I want to get out in 20 minutes. If I stay in too long, I will get a headache. And I, I've know my, I know my threshold now. I know the temperature and the duration and the amount of water and all that. Like, I know all those variables. Isn't it amazing how much water you can drink in a sauna? Like, I, I, I know. It's, it's, I worry it, I'm going to get hyponatremia. I'm like, you got to slow this down. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the interesting thing is, is that talking about dementia risk, I talked about heat shock proteins and I, I kind of didn't even, I like went off on this tangent, sorry. But the heat shock proteins, what they do is they prevent proteins from misfolding and forming aggregates, right? And so, um, you know, it's it's it, obviously when you're getting into a hot sauna, you are denaturing some proteins. And so your heat shock proteins are a stress response that's activated to help with the proper folding of those proteins that were kind of denatured somewhat from the heat that you were exposing yourself to. Well, it turns out the heat shock proteins stay active for a long time. And so they end up having this like effect where you're now just improving the folding of proteins in general, even after you're out of the hot sauna, right? So um, he, there's a lot of animal studies that have been done. I did a lot of studies in worms like many, many years ago where you can take amyloid beta 42, inject it into a worm muscle tissue and then activate heat shock proteins and it like prevents the aggregation and it prevents the, the muscle sort of paralysis that occurs in these worms. Animal studies have been done looking at amyloid beta and heat shock proteins and Alzheimer's disease, again, it's having a protective effect. Now, is that the whole story? No, the cardiovascular effects are also important for brain health, in my opinion, right? You know the data coming out of Dr. Yari Lakunin's lab showing that dementia and Alzheimer's disease risk is 66% lower in people that are using the sauna four to seven times per week versus just one time a week. Of course, all and that was at 179 degrees or greater for 20 minutes or greater, right? Yeah, like 175 or 179 exactly for 20 minutes. Um, now, here's where your question comes in, and that is like, what about the head? And there was another study out of Finland. It was not Yari's lab. It was another professor that I, I, I'm not aware of. But um, this study looked at sauna use and dementia risk. And then it sort of, it stratified the data based on temperature. And it was protective again. People that are using the sauna, again, they're getting a protective effect against dementia. But when people were going extreme, so if they're going above 200 degrees Fahrenheit and they're on average, it was like if they're getting to like 212, people do this, by the way. This is like you can go on yep. Instagram and see it's a, not an uncommon thing. Their dementia risk was actually increased with that temperature where it was like really hot. And my concern is the head at that high of a temperature. I've started wearing one of those. Um, sauna hats. The sauna hats. Yeah. yeah. I, it, it, and again... I don't know why it works. Do you? Um, it I mean, it doesn't, it's, it's not logical to me why it's hurting, it's, uh, why it's helping rather. I don't know. It's, it does seem to help. <laughs> I mean, it shields probably some of the heat that you're being exposed to, right? Because there's got to be yeah, like suppose, but, ambient. But, it, but the fact that that's a net benefit because it's also got to be preventing you from dissipating heat. But True. clearly what it's preventing coming it's, in it coming is in. exceeds what it, but, but it makes such a difference. Um, those, I mean, these cultures in like I've Finland, also, I've also it. dialed mine down a little bit. I used yeah. to be consistently going to at least 200. And now I'm like, you know what? Honestly, like 185 to 190 is good enough. I'm 180. I do 180. And well, my wife is going to be very happy if we dial it down to 180. Because yeah. she, she's more, uh, she seems more sensitive to the heat than I am. I'm more sensitive to the heat than my husband is as well. I wonder if there's some kind of sex thing where, yeah, if it's it's definitely like I'm, I'm more sensitive to it. So, so that's great. So, th but this is important. So, you really think that we could even dial it to 180? Uh, absolutely, and just, and just totally get the that's, same benefit. I mean, the data is showing. That. Yeah, yeah, I know. I just, I, you know, me. More is better. It, more is better. I'm not, not just you. It's it's a, it's, a, it's a common, you know, it's like go hard, go home, right? Um, but I do think with you, you, we're talking about a type of stress here, right? Yeah, he and you have to get it hormetically correct. Exactly, exactly. That's you know, I, I don't know that the 212, and I hope people that are out there doing the 212 are like listening to this because it's too it's too hot. It, you, there's no need for it. You're not. There's no evidence you're getting added benefit, and if anything, there's potential benefit, potential, potential risk that you're exactly getting potential risk downside. I don't. You know, that's just one study. Yeah, yeah. But it's enough to make me go, hmm, I don't like there's no there's no data showing we need that. So why are we doing that? 